G'day yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Saturday, May the 14th, 2022 and this is video number 146. How is everyone doing? I hope well. It's been a while since I updated you on makes that I've been working on or finished and I've got to share with you a finished work as well as updates on ones that you've seen in the past and a couple of new ones. I have some happy mail to show and also acquisition. I have some life updates as well that I'll put towards the end of the community that me and my husband Chad have moved into. So I hope that you'll stick around and enjoy those things. I've noticed a few new people who have joined the channel and made some comments and those people have been directed from Crystal over at Bag of Day who gave me a shout out in her lives and talks about some of the makes that I've gifted to her in the past. Yeah, a couple of beanies and I always, always am gobsmacked when she wears them and talks about the channel. So I want to say thank you so much, Crystal, for flagging me and this channel and all of these wonderful new people that have come my way and said hello. So um, thank you. Thank you so much. This young community is just um, unbelievable. So I, let's get started with the podcast and I'll talk about what I'm wearing. It is a knitted sweater pullover that I finished, I think maybe a year and a half ago. And it's to the Fitch Gerald sweater pattern. Now, I will include the maker as well as the details of the sweater down below in the description box. So if you want to pop over and take a look at the pattern, it'll have a link there. It is a paid for pattern. So I just wanted to leave that up front. Now, let's start with the finished object. I'm super, super proud of this. I started off with little notes in my sketchbook and talked about like how I was going to count my stitch counts and where I was going to put some design features. So I'm really, really happy. This is a great prototype for the first for the first one that I'm, I've tried out. So this is the jean jacket inspired, inspired cable cardigan. So here it is finished here. I am, it's a little bit too small for me, about three inches of more of positive ease that I need for it to fit my body shape. And I think I know where I'm going to make the changes. I've put the notes down for my 2.0 series of this pattern. Now it's not going to be a pattern. I'm not going to release it. This is just uh, for me to build a little bit of uh, wardrobes that I, uh, items in a wardrobe that I really want to have. And this is one of the ones that I want in my wardrobe as well. But this is a great first uh, prototype for me. So I'll talk a little bit about it. I think when I showed you last, I was maybe up to here. And I was just about to split for the arm, so the rest of it's completed now. The the top parts are done, and the the sleeves have been added in, and I've done a f the feature of the the cuff. Uh, sorry, not the cuff, the collar. <laughs> and yeah, I'm really happy with the textures on it. So, a little bit about this pattern is it has. When I'll start from where I was in the beginning, it has the seed stitch for the hem here of the waist, and then it goes into the seed stitch for the button bands, and it uses two cables, which are two over two cables. Uh, I have two on each of the panels, so there's four in the front, all up. Then I get to a part here where I think uh, I was thinking more of the jean jacket cut severing all of the the design stitches here and then making some sort of textural two by two by two rows so two knit two purl all the way through and then I did two rows of the same and then I alternated for the third and fourth row and then I just repeated that towards the end uh, keeping the seed stitch for the the band going up all the way to the collar's edge and around the collar here so I really like that uh, feature, how it's been cut. The back has three cables and then the same treatment here, same 
uh, level. So this cuts across the top of the shoulder blade and the front cuts across the top of probably here where this blue line is, just under the, the collar. So it sits pretty high up. And the feature on the sleeves is that it is, uh, it has one cable feature going across the top of the sleeve all the way down to the cuff. And the cuff I've done in two, two by two ribbing. I was gonna do a feature on the bottom of the yarn. I think I mentioned it in the last video, but I decided against it and I wanted to put the cable on the top of the arm. I think as a feature, it's a nicer feature. I'm really super happy with it. I have some photographs that I was posting on Instagram about the history of how I built this up. And visually you can see uh, what, I, what I'm talking about through the stages working top, uh, bottom to top. And I'll include them here. So enjoy them. I'll come back and we'll talk about the yarn that I use in knitting needles. A wonderful process of lots of learning for me and also uh, a great prototype at the end. The fabric is quite a uh, soft fabric. So to fit your body, it would drape very nicely. And the yarn that I used is no longer in circulation, but I will show another yarn that could be a good comparison if you're wanting to make something that looks in the same color and the same yarn weight. So here it is, it's a four weight yarn and it is Stitch Studio by Nicole in the Earth Tone series. The colorway is called Butternut and I like all the little flecks in them. I did wash the garment and a few of the, the flecks uh, came off of the, the fabric, but uh, the majority of it did stay on the yarn. So really nice to know that if you spend all that time getting that nice texture and then if you wash it by hand, that the flecks do a lot of them. I'm gonna say maybe 80% of the flecks stayed on. Um, so what else can I tell you? It's really, really soft, the yarn. And I used two balls of this. I did have a little bit left over of the second ball. So maybe one ball and four fifths of a ball, because there was probably around 80 grams left over in the second ball that I did not use. And the size that I have, I'm going to say is a small to medium men size. So I think with an extra four inches or three inches of positive ease, it would, uh, it would make an, a nice comfortable fit for me. And I'm generally somewhere between a, me a men's medium and a men's large. So uh, yeah, just to keep that in mind as well, when you're making your garments, that um, you have enough yarn to do something that you can wear. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this ball here is, let's have a look. It is 280 grams, which gives me 612 yards or 560 meters. So I'm gonna say maybe mm, close to 1200 uh, yards or 1100 meters is used in uh, a medium, a small medium men's. Yeah, this one was also generously gifted to me by Crystal over a bag a day. And I really appreciate the yarn. I have another ball here that I'm thinking I might make something else with and use color work. So let's take a look at the knitting needles that I used for that. Sorry about that. Um, I used a 4.5 set of uh, millimeters set of circulars and it was at 29 inches in length and these ones are bamboo needles from clover the substitute yarn that i have here down uh, by me is this one here i think is a great substitute if you're looking to create something in the similar color similar flex this one is the craft smart value tweed variety in a full weight yarn. The difference in the yarns is this one is a little bit more plump than the Stitch Studio. As you can see, the color's a little different as well. 
and the flecks are a little different. But I think a, a great substitute for if you're looking for something similar would be using this one. And it's in the colorway called Mustard. Just the size difference here of what you get inside of each of the balls. And you may have to think about buying a few more of these balls to get enough for your project than you would if you had something as big as this. Makes sense, right? <laughs> the next thing that I want to talk about is housed in here and it is a work in progress. You've seen this before, but I want to catch you up on it. I have it housed in my wonderful saddle, I call it the saddle bag, and it is from an Etsy crafter called Jezebel B. And she is out of Quebec in Canada. That's her label there. Any Etsy store person or a crafter or a pattern maker, I'll have included down below in the description box. And when I was went back to visit her site because I wanted to see what else she had, I saw the video of her using this kind of bag and how she designed it. So you can actually walk around with this over your arm and as you're kind of walking around and being mobile, you can crochet and knit with it. And so, yeah, I really like it. It's very durable and it holds around 400 grand skeins uh, and my project, which is this one. I'll just unravel it here. So this is the Stephen West's exploration station and i am if you want to for a lack of better terms there are five sections and i'm up to section four and i'm halfway through section four but this is becoming a bit of a beast on the needles i'm close to 400 stitches so here we go i absolutely love it okay what do you think what do you think of when you look at these colors there's a famous painting that i'm reminded of when i'm looking at this i wonder whether we're on the same wavelength it's a fingering weight uh pattern that i've used and the colors that i'm cho uh, that i've chosen to put in there my color a is this one here and it's a very dark blue color, almost ultramarine. And it has nice kind of washy feel in some sections showing the natural yarn underneath. It doesn't have a color name, but this is a local dyer here to where I live on Vancouver Island. And it's called Sweater Maker Yarn. So that's the details if you're interested in Googling it and searching it yourself, but it's a beautiful uh, yarn and the base is uh, merino wool and nylon. So 85 merino wool and 15% nylon. My color B was generously gifted to me by a YouTuber and her name is Kerry Penny. The channel that she has is called The Happy Crafty Homemaker. Hi, Kerry Penny. And this one is from the company called Queen City Yarn. And the colorway is Neptune, King Neptune. So this is also a, a different ratio. It's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. Love those colors. Uh, that's also still attached to the work. <laughs> this one is color C and that's a Knit Picks yarn from the Hawthorne series and it is called, oh no, I don't have the ball band. Here it is. Hawthorne Fingering Weight Spring Water. This one is 80% superwash fine highland wool and 20% polyamide. Has the most texture to the yarn that I've chosen. You can really see the twist on it. And the last one is my color D, which is one that my husband treated me uh, my birthday last year from 
a Seattle-based online store called Little Knits, and <laughs> this is it here. I'm not going to be able to pronounce the the yarn maker, but this is it here. If you can read that, hopefully. <laughs> so this one's colorway is called something dancing. That's what I remember. Dancing machine. I really like that too. And this is a hundred percent wool. No breakdown, just a hundred percent wool. There's the details there. I'm sorry, my camera is not focusing. Nope, doesn't want to focus. What did you get in your mind about like what painting this reminded you of? I don't know about you, but this one sprung to mind. It's Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. Something about the uh, the contouring and also the the eyelets that are formed in the design reminds me a lot of this painting. And I've heard a couple of other podcasters who have made the the, the piece also mention the same thing that it's similar to Starry Night. I agree. The next couple of works in progress that I'm going to share with you are new to the channel. I have posted them on Instagram, but I haven't spoken about here on the YouTube channel. I have started a new job, as you may know, uh, last eight weeks ago or nine weeks ago, and I get an hour for lunch. So I was thinking I need a small project that I can work on when I have my hour break for lunch, just to knit or crochet on that's not gonna be too cumbersome. So I throw this little one into my bag when I go to work. And this is a project bag that was gifted to me about a year ago by my friend Shirley. I wanna say thank you, Shirley. I love this bag so much. You may have recognized it. It is by a YouTuber. Her name is Billy, and she has a channel called The Crafty Floridian. Hi, Billy. And I absolutely love this bag. It has one of my favorite things, pottery and ceramics in the fabric design. So super, super cool. Now I am working on a pair of socks. This, this is my only, second only ever socks that I've made. I've made one pair for myself and these will be for my husband, Chad, in his favorite color, which is orange. And I am up to the part where I've put on my toes onto the tubes and my cuffs in this gray accent color. And I am now up to putting the heels and I believe it's called an afterthought heel because these were cranked out tubes. And I'm going to sever across the, this part here between the two safety lines, pick up stitches and do my heels. Absolutely love these. These were generously gifted to me by another, another fiber friend and her name is Melinda. Hi, Melinda. And I absolutely love the idea of doing half the sock on a cranked out tube and then just adding your cuffs and your heels and your toes in whatever style of yarn that you like. Uh, what can I tell you about the yarn? Okay, the cranked out tubes are from Peyton's Croy Sock in the colorway Canyon Colors. Okay, confession time. My battery died and I had some flickering in my overhead light, so I don't know what was going on there. So it is a little later and I have to catch you up on what I was up to. I was at the part of talking about what kind of heel, toes and cuff contrast color yarn I was using. And here it is here. I'm using the Drops Fable Uni Color in this color number 115, no color name, but it's a light gray heathered. Really like this yarn. It's working out very nicely. On my first pair of socks that I have ever done, I used a similar yarn in the collection, but in a different colorway. And after washing and wearing, maybe for six months, these socks that uh, use this for toes, heels and cuffs, 
are holding up very nicely. So the difference in the needle sizes that I'm using from the first pair to this pair is only one small alteration. Uh, I'm using the 3.25 millimeter stainless steel circulars in this nine inch uh, cable. And that worked out really nice for the cuffs. And for the toes and the heel that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using this pair of double pointed needles and slightly smaller, two millimeters in this stainless steel chagu set. And I've chosen to do a smaller needle to make the clothes because I'm a loose knitter. And when I was doing my first pair of socks, I had some laddering happening and only because I was using the 3.25 for the closing of the hole. And I'm quite loose when I change from one double pointed needle to the next. So I've gone down a size and it's working out really nicely. The pattern that I'm using is also part of the gift kit that came with the tubes that Melinda had cranked out for me and sent me. So here we are here, it is called Transformer Tube. And I just got a message. I don't know whether this is a pay for pattern or if it's still available out there, but uh, I'll leave the details down below to what I can read on the back of the pattern. So yeah. If it's paid for, it's really helpful. It has the easy uh, diagrams with photographs and instructions on how to do each section of the sock. Moving right along to the next item, a work in progress that I have not shown on the channel before. I'm about halfway through this and I'm absolutely loving how it's turning out. It is to my um, notes in my <laughs> chicken scratch of my journal on how to make a sweater vest, like cable sweater vest. And I'm loving the way that these yarns are playing out. I'm holding two yarns together to create the main color here in brown. And then the accent stripe here in the tan is also two yarns held together to get the thickness that I needed, but also to play upon the different colors that run through uh, each of the yarns that I'm using. Yeah, it's a 44 inch after blocking and um, I guess washing and blocking, it'll be to a men's large size, which is not looking that way right now, but after a little bit of the stretching and blocking, you'll see the cables opening up and that's how you're meant to kind of be wearing the cables is having them sort of nicely displayed in the recesses of the pearls. So loving it. What am I using? As needles, I'm using five millimeter uh, needles, and these are just the loops and threads, metal needle tips, and the cable length is around 30 to 32 inches. The yarn, I've had this yarn in my collection, and it's been calling to me for a very long time. It is the Knit Picks Brava Sport, 100% premium acrylic, slightly glossy in this lovely color. It's called Camel Heather. It's a two weight yarn and I'm holding it together with another yarn that I specifically got for the project. And I had one ball in this rust color from my collection, but I um, loved it so much when I worked up a test swatch that I went out and I purchased more of this rust color. And the, the second yarn there in that rust color is from Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. And it is a combination of all different uh, fibers. So I'm finding it very nice to work with. They are together making up like a four weight yarn and I'm using the five millimeter uh, kneading needles and I am a loose knitter. So if you are doing something as big like a project, like a sweater, always do a uh, swatch test to see if you are happy with the needle size that you're using with your tension. Um, so I absolutely love it. It's creating a little bit of a nice 
Fuzz Halo, as well as, as the sheen from the Premium Acrylic from the Brava Sport. And that's a nice, beautiful shimmer. Now for the accent color, I am using two yarns as well. And I'm holding these two together. This yarn here was generously gifted to me by my good friend, Crystal. Thank you, Crystal, so much for the uh, yarn. You'll probably hear me talk a lot about yarn in the next year where I'm pulling from a beautiful box gifted to me by Crystal. And it has many different beautiful yarns that, um, that I want to jump at using. And I have a difficult time choosing which one to, to use next. But this tan colored, sandy colored yarn is from a company called Puna. It's 100% baby alpaca and it's amazingly decadently soft. Uh, this is by Amano and it is a yarn that is made in Peru. I absolutely love it. The color is 4001 and it's classified, I believe, a fingering weight yarn. Although it doesn't say here. I think it might be a fingering weight yarn and I'm holding it together with a... Uh, Kartopu yarn that I over dyed and the collection of the Kartopu yarn is called Natural Angora and I have put in some scarlet as well as some grey hues dyes uh, to get this nice kind of fleshy style reddish grey colour. <laughs> it doesn't really have a name. So those two together are working up into my beautiful accent stripes. So there it is again, once more, absolutely love it. I'll get up close so you can see that feature that I'm talking about with those two yarns held together and how you get some shimmer and you get then some nice halo. It's a nice color, uh, flat enough colored so that the cables are featured quite prominently and it's not high, hidden by the halo. Uh, so. I really enjoyed working with this and I'm enjoying finishing it up as well. Next up is a work in progress, which I am entering in for a year long make along and I am fallen way behind. So I, I have to apologize. I've just had life get in the way and occasionally I might pick up something <laughs> and submit an entry to Setter's 2022 calendar cow. Uh, I missed on out on March, but I picked the yarn that I want to use for the calendar cow. And I have April's one kind of done, <laughs> maybe three quarters of the way. And here we are in May. So um, I'll catch up, but I just want everyone to uh, accept my apologies for being so late. So April's month, this is the scarf that I'm knitting up in a tube. I'm just going round and round and round. And these colors I've chosen to celebrate April's month, which is Deb. And she's from the YouTube world as well. Her channel is called the Canadian Crutcheter. It's crocheter, but she pronounces it crutcheter. It's a, I guess, a personal inside uh, joke for her family. And so these are the colors that are represented in the photograph of the month of April that Deb has submitted to Setter for her calendar cow. What do you think? So in her photograph is a uh, autumn scene and she's sitting on a deck in a cabin in the woods and she's wearing a beautiful warm colored, like I'm gonna say all the reds and oranges in her sweater. And she's got these fantastic red boots. So. I've chosen and picked colors that are in the woodwork in the, sh in the shed and the deck that she's sitting on. Also the autumn leaves and a little bit of the red that she loves. It's not exactly the same, but it was all the colors that were featured in a ball of yarn that I found and recently purchased from Hirschner's. So I'll talk to you a little bit about my dilemma on having the yarn stretch long enough for the project that I need. And 
Here is the yarn that I'm using. It's from Hirschner's and it's their worsted stripes yarn in this wonderful colorway. And as soon as I saw these colors, I thought they kind of relate to the, the photograph. It is in the colorway called Moroccan. And get rid of that message. So my dilemma that I had, because this is eight ounces or I believe a half a pound of yarn, I knitted up the first five colors because there is only five colors and then they repeat. So this is what's in the ball. We've got this light, nice green, a raspberry red, a gold, and then this taupey color. And it's kind of like a aqua greenish sage. And then I thought I'm going to weigh this and see how many, how many times I can get a repeat in that one ball. So I discovered that I would only make around four feet, four or five feet with the amount of stitches that I had. And I wanted a longer scarf. So I thought to myself, I need to complement it with another yarn. And you may recognize it. It's the yarn that I used in my jean jacket inspired cable sweater vest, sweater vest, no, cardigan, sorry. And um, so I put this in, it's the Stitch Studio by Nicole in the colorway Butternut. And I interdispersed it in throughout the changes of the Moroccan colorway from the Hirschner's stripes yarn. And I'm now at four and a half feet, which I would have finished the full bowl, but I have enough now to complete a six foot scarf and then have enough to do a matching hat. And these will be entered into the uh, September, uh, so what is it, like a hat and scarf or hat and cowl sets that Rose from Rose Likes Crochet is collecting for her wings campaign. So yeah, I'll have enough now to do a six foot as well as a hat. So that's almost like two birds with one stone. It's the sweater, it's the calendar cowl, but also will be uh, the finished item that I'm going to submit to donate to Rose in September. And I'm using a, I believe these are five millimeter knitting needles as well. And this is from my Chagu uh, interchangeable set that I have. I love that set so much. So they're the stainless steel and I've, chosen a cable which is a makes the whole thing around nine inches and the number of stitches across uh, I should say in the whole uh, circle is 44 stitches so it gives me what four to five inches maybe even six inches across here and the thickness of the of the bands I really like as well yeah so I'm enjoying it. Now, a little tip, I don't know whether you want to see the inside, but to save on yarn ends, because I will, you know, I am interchanging between the two balls now, I am just running up along the inner side of the tube with the yarn. So this is obviously where I started the yarn. And then I am Every so often, like one or two uh, rows, I twist my yarn and move up the color of the other ball. And then I insert that and start using that. And then I move up the next ball into the next colorway. So I'm not having to tie in any loose ends there. It's running up on the inside. The only trick is that you have to have your tension of that strand that's following up quite loose so that when you're looking at the piece you're not having any weird pulling of your stitches and having an issue with having it opening up the fabric to show the inside of the fabric so yeah I'm seeing that maybe there is a little pull here but not too bad and that's where it changes into the next color 
And that way I'm starting and stopping in all different places because I'm actually traveling the yarn up in a zigzag and it's not creating much of a jog as well because the eye is not picking up on one area where the jog is happening. It's kind of all over the place. But I really like the colors. So yeah, just put that on. That's how it will look. Not much more to do on this one. Next up is some Happy Mail. It came in this box and it came all the way from Ontario from my friend Melinda and she's written me a lovely note. I won't read it here on the camera, it's personal, but thank you so much for sending me the box of goodies in uh, the Happy Mail and I'm super excited about this yarn. So let's take a look what she has sent me. So she was doing a de-stash, cleaning out her yarn, and she thought that this would go really well with my collection and maybe working up a project with it. I have some ideas and it is Noro yarn. Look at that amazing color. It is in a warmish, rusty brown color and similar to the sweater vest. Oh, it's actually more, uh, more reddish brown and I absolutely love it. It's wonderfully soft. It's called Retro and it is Noro, the world of nature. It's a yarn that's made in Japan and these balls are 64% wool, 24% silk and 12% angora. So really nice fibers in there, really soft. I could wear this against my skin with no issues, but if you had any adverse uh, reaction to any of those ingredients like the wool or alpaca, then um, Angora, sorry, this might not be the yarn for you. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Melinda. And it is a mm, saying here to use a US knitting needles of seven to eight. And that translates to metric as 4.5 five to four, uh, sorry, 4.5 to five millimeter set of knitting needles. Crochet hook would probably be the same. Maybe a five millimeter would work up nicely and larger if you want a bigger drape, depending on what kind of stitch you wanted to use. But I absolutely love it. I don't know, it's 50 grams, a hundred meters. So I got a number of them in the box. So I've got one, two, three, Four. So that's 500 meters and I think a nice cowl out of this would be awesome. A little bit of a shine to it. The light's picking up that color just beautifully. I love it. Thank you so much. Now this one here, I read the note and it's a fiber that has been imported and I believe it's from a location, Latvia. It must be a country just off of Russia. I have a feeling in the Baltic Sea area and I have never had any Latvio yarn before. And this has that lanolin feel. It's very rustic. I love the colors. And I think once you work with this and wash it up, it's gonna just bloom and be a beautiful fabric. The colorway is in another language, I believe. It says, oh no, color is C3. And I'm not too sure about the ingredients, but I think it is 100% wool. It feels like 100% wool. I love it. It does have that barn feel, smell to it and I see that there are still fiber in it. So it's a very rustic uh, yarn. I got two of those hanks in two different colors. So this one here is a A4 color code. Wonderful. I can't wait to work these up. Now these have an interesting color dye treatment to them that I think will need to speak on their own, or maybe I can blend the two together in some type of mosaic uh, crochet work or a knitted kind of sweater 
uh, type uh, top with uh, the oak having color work done. I'm not too sure what I'd use these for, but I'm just gonna admire them for the, for the next little while before jumping in and using them. Thank you so much, Melinda, they are so wonderful. Oh my goodness, Melinda, you have outdone yourself. Look at this amazing project bag. Now, I've been on this kick lately to put all my projects in project bags, and I absolutely love this one, Melinda. It's quilted, so it does have a lovely stitch work, that sort of fabric that joins, uh, feels a bit puffy. I like the colors, green's my favorite, and I do like the accent that it creates here in this really funky, it's like a pop artish kind of uh, abstraction here of the blues and the greens. Absolutely love this utility toggle uh, to put keys on or if you want to some, somehow attach it while you're working on a project that can stay inside the bag, then that's a little handy dandy feature. Look at the inside. I love that fabric. It's like a marble effect of a, ooh, a little bit limeish green with um, a darker green. And it is a zip, uh, like it closes up with a zip, keeping everything safe inside. And it does have a box bottom. So it gives you a little bit of extra width on projects that might be a bit bulkier. I'm gonna say that it, it is, fairly much the same kind of capacity as my saddlebag. So 400 gram skeins could fit in here with maybe a, a little bit of a shawl as you're using the, the skeins up that the shawl would be able to fit inside of the project bag. So thank you, Melinda. I love it so much. So I thought I would add into these segments of my podcast, a highlight of a Canadian yarn company or an indie designer here in Canada. And because I'm in Canada, I want to talk about like price points in Canadian currency as well as shipping and shipping times. So I am featuring the yarn seller over in Ontario called True North Yarn Co. And I'll link their website down below should you want to go across and visit and check out their website. I'm not affiliated with them. I purchased from them several times and I use my own funds to purchase their yarn and their goodies. So I've got a few things to show you and talk about. So it came in this box here, nothing on a huge scale. Now I have purchased from their Black Friday sale last year and I added to uh, this time round a few of the yarns that I had purchased last time. So I had one of these balls in my stash that I purchased from the Black Friday sale last year. And I am adding to that because I'm using them now in that sweater vest that I'm creating. And I've got three more to add to the sweater vest. And these are the beautiful drops brushed alpaca silk in the colorway rust and they're 25 gram balls, and each of these balls were sold in Canadian currency on the True North Co Yarn Co for 690, I think 695 from memory. And when they have their sale, their Black Friday sale, when I purchased the first ball, it was at 15% off. So sometimes they do have wonderful sales as well. And this is a beautiful soft yarn. I've worked it up in my sweater vest. And let's take a look at some of the ingredients of the yarn. It is a combination yarn blend of 77 alpaca and 23% silk. It's probably, I would classify it because it's got a halo on it between a three and a four they're suggesting to use a five millimeter set of knitting needles. So I think that would probably translate to a crochet hook of maybe five millimeter, 5.5 uh, in a crochet hook size. And I'm just trying to get you a strand here because it is quite a sticky yarn. There we go there. And they are suggesting to hand wash this and lay flat to dry. They're also 
saying in the 25 gram ball here, you get 140 meters or 153 yards. It is a yarn that is manufactured in, I always find this the hardest to find in Peru. And the color of this one is called rust, or if you're looking for the number, it's 24. A beautiful soft yarn. I absolutely love this color. So I got three balls of that in the order. I also have purchased a yarn that I had in my collection, but I, I gifted it out to a friend because my friend fell in love with it so much that I thought you need to use this straight away. So I have replenished in a different color. It is the Cascades Luminosa. I absolutely love this yarn. It has that pearlescence kind of effect when it plays with the light. It changes color and shimmers like a metallic kind of result. And this is quite a popular yarn right now in many different yarn companies. They have their own style of this uh, result as well. There's Rock and Roll. There is uh, Metallico uh, from Hobie. So a number of different yarn companies are producing yarn that look like this type of iridescent and shimmer. I absolutely love it. This one, I believe is called Tiger Eye and the colorway number is 02. They are suggesting here to hand wash, lay flat to dry. And the breakdown of this yarn is, where are we? There we go. 52 viscose, 44 baby alpaca and 4% uh, merino wool. It can be worn against your skin with no undergarments required, but obviously if you had adverse reaction to any of the fibers that I've just mentioned, perhaps this is not the yarn for you. It's really super soft and in this 100 gram hank, I am able to enjoy 240 yards or 220 meters. So Again, that's the tiger eye, and I got three hanks. Now, I did the math because the invoice tells me the price in totality of the three together, and it is $15 Canadian per hank. Absolutely love it. Last thing that I got here is a hand dyer from Ontario, so a Canadian indie dyer, and this is the label on the set that I purchased from them called Full Moon Fibers. And these wonderful colors. Now the hand dyer is based in Ontario, Canada. And this set cost 32 Canadian dollars. The uh, color names here are called Pumpkin Spice and Walnut. I think this one might be the Walnut and this one might be the Pumpkin Spice. Really lovely color combinations here. Now it's got here on the label, Lucky 5050 sock set. Now these yarns are fingering weight. They don't need to be used as socks, but maybe in a mini set uh, shawl that you're featuring all the beautiful colors in a mini set from one gradated end of the color spectrum to the next. Uh, that's always a beautiful result as well using these mini sets. And the breakdown of it is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It is saying that each of these skeins or mini skeins are 50 grams and that provides 182 yards or 166 meters. Combined together, there are 364 yards or 332 meters in total. Hand wash, lay flat to dry. I just love them. Look at those colors. They remind me of someone who loves brown. And I have also another wonderful caramel color from another indie designer who designs their yarn. And it's this one here. I think that they will work up really nicely together in a project. What do you think? Now this yarn here is from Emily C. Gillies. And it's Terambithia, the colorway. I think that those pumpkin spice, walnut, and 
Terambithia would be a great set to work up together. The other things that True North Co. does feature, and I purchased one of them, is these awesome pom-poms in faux fur. I absolutely love them. So I could have had trouble picking a colour, but I chose this neutrally grey colour that they have. Goes well with everything. I think grey is wonderful that way. And these are $5 per pom-pom. And it's called Wild Wild Woolly. And that's the colour name of the pom-pom should you want to search one up yourself. I also got a Chagu interchangeable cable in the Red Lace series that I have. Now, I purchased the interchangeable set with the shorter cables from anywhere from, I think, the 9-inch cable all the way to the 20-inch, but I didn't have longer ones with the set, so I purchased one to go into that set with my interchangeable tips, and it cost me, I believe, that was $12.50. So I have added that to my interchangeable uh, sets from Chagu. I liked my shopping experience on True North Yarn Co.'s website. They had wonderful selection of yarns from both Canada and also international. And the fact that they put everything in Canadian currency makes it so much easier because I'm in Canada. There's no second guessing how much the conversion rate is going to cost, which is a nice feature. And they shipped Canada Post. It arrived about two weeks after I had made the order online. Nice time frame, not too long, not too short. And the shipping, I reached a certain threshold in my purchases Currently, as of today, May 14th, 2022, if you reach over $100 or more product price, then shipping is free. Now is the time to talk about what I've been up to in the new to me community that I've moved into with my husband, Chad. Some of these things I have done with Chad and some of them on my own. So if you're just here for the Yarny content and it's over, then I wanna thank you for joining in. Uh, you have a busy weekend ahead of you and you need to rush off and do your things. Understandable. Thank you for coming. And for those who want to continue on, uh, please do. I hope that you enjoy the next little bit. So what have I been up to? Well, got to catch you up on a few major points here because uh, it's been a couple of weeks. And Easter being one of them, we got together family at the family cabin and had a beautiful meal it was always it's always fun catching up with family there's always games to be had in the family that I've married into and we have such a good laugh um we enjoyed a chilly kind of like climate around the lake but it's always good just to get out of the house and into fresh air and go on those long nature walks so we did that also on April 23rd it was forgotten that that was one of our key dates. It was mine and Chad's first official date that we went on. Uh, I think other dates have superseded uh, April 23rd, like our wedding date has, you know, overtaken that. And we do things to celebrate the wedding date, but not so much the first official date. And how we came to recall that it was <laughs> Our first date that we went on was that a friend had it in her uh, calendar and she texted us, happy first date anniversary. So me and Chad ended up going for a meal out. We caught up with some friends and we ended up in a pub and we were guessing name the tune in a trivia night that they had in the Griffin pub, which is by um, the Air Force uh, base in Comox and that was a lot of fun. So we uh, played the game. We were somewhere in the middle of the pack in the answers. Uh, definitely by no stretch of the means did we win the evening's uh, trivia, but we were enjoying ourselves. Uh, we got to pick three decades where we would name the tune. And I would say we did relatively good. We got the artist and the title of the song, but the year that it was uh, released was the tricky um, trifecta that we we didn't quite hit. We got two out of three, which was pretty good. Uh, I also played bingo 
with the Fiber Hustle uh, podcast people, and that is Chip and Erin. Hi, Chip and Erin. They had their April, was it April? Yeah, it was April, uh, bingo. And that was a lot of fun. I am really eager and hopefully that I can get into a spot for their pride, which is June bingo. And I won two prizes. I can't believe it. So I'm really excited to receive the prizes. Uh, the boys have already emailed out saying that they might come this month sometime. So I'm really looking forward to it. And one of the hanks of yarn is a hand dyed hank of yarn from Needles at the Ready by Kevin and Ray. Hi Kevin and Ray. I can't wait to get it. It's in this wonderful colorway called Rhubarb. Uh, yeah, I already have some pairing in mind. I've got some other fingering weight yarn that I think I might work up with it. So excited for that. And the second skein was called the Beaver State. Now I believe the Beaver State is on Oregon in the, uh, the US and the, the hand dyer is called the Beaver State Hand Dyed Yarn. And it is in this wonderful colorway called Blue Whale. And that's equally exciting. Can't wait to get that one. So I think that's probably about all the things, major things that I could catch you up on that were happening over the course of the last two weeks. I'm still enjoying my work. It is a learning curve that I'm still getting through processes and where things are. So I am finding that lots of files are needing organizing. <laughs> yeah, so um, it is just an office job. I, I do like my team. My team is amazing. So I wanna do a shout out to my team at my work. I won't talk about where I work or their names. We will now move on to what I've been watching and I have three really great movies where, that I can suggest to, if you're stitching away and you want something interesting to watch. I have Parasite, which is a South Korean movie. Now, it is kind of humorous to a point, and then there is like this big blow up at the end. Now, I won't talk to you about the blow up at the end because that will give away too much of the, of the storyline. But um, Parasite, you have to read subtitles. I believe it is on Netflix and they don't have the option of dubbing. So you have to uh, go ahead and, and put the subtitles on or maybe they're already on as a default and you have to read. So whatever you're stitching or you're working on, you need to be comfortable to actually uh, look away from your work. But I loved the movie. It was great. It got lots of accolades, I think, at one of the Golden Globes or the Oscars. I'm not sure which one it won. Uh, when They See Us is another movie. It is a rendition of uh, a true life event that happened. And it's about the Central Park Five. It really made me upset and stayed with me for a long time, that movie. So uh, if you're up for a powerful kind of, you know, humanitarian type approach movie where you get frustrated because people are not being truthful and people have some sort of conviction to an idea of uh, what, what the truth was, but it's kind of a fabricated truth in in people's minds, then you watch this movie and you will feel some sort of emotion <laughs> welling up inside, that's for sure. It just made me so mad. Uh, the last movie that I can suggest is CODA. Now, CODA is an acronym, Child of Deaf Adult. And so the family that it centers around is a deaf, family and one of the ch children is uh, has hearing so it's the support that this family uses the child that can hear as their interpreter and uh, how much they lean on her for getting through life uh, it's also a coming of age movie for the young child who is the translator for her family members and just a wonderful happy story and, you know, 
wonderful feelings are, are brought up with that one. So I would suggest Coda as well as a movie to go and watch. So with that, I think that catches you up on everything and apologies for being late with some of the make-alongs that I've joined. I think that I'll probably plow out a few of these in the next couple of weeks. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.